morning students welcome back to our youtube channel dentizy let's make dentistry easy with dentizy a totally a concept based learning so today in this lecture we shall discuss about the model analysis model analysis particularly about the boltons analysis so let's get started before going deep into the model analysis first of all we need to know what is model as we know whenever a patient visits us there are certain set of diagnostic records which we maintain could it be radiographic records the photographic records and the impressions and the study cast when we make the study cast or the study models we use them to study for the later for the treatment planning for the later purposes and the record maintenance so those are the uh, study models and we analyze them to find out to figure out certain set of tooth length tooth size arch length discrepancies depending upon the different types of analysis done so that is basically the model analysis so we need models one to save the time for the patient that we can send off the patient at a particular time once the records are maintained number 2 details can be duplicated and they can be studied later on they can be used for comparisons also between the pre treatment mid treatment and the post treatment and there is a decreased duration for the patient's visit or the appointment otherwise we have to keep the patient sitting and take all the measurements no to to save the patient's time we just maintain the records we take the impressions and make the study models out of it and we send the patient off hence reducing the duration of patient's appointment now about the boltons analysis before going deep into it let's discuss it is said that in the well aligned upper and the lower arch they have the normal overjet and overbite there exists a definite proportionality between both the arches which help in maintaining the adequate overjet overbite and the alignment of the teeth with respect to the arches if the proportionality is met so the maxillary dentition it fits well with the mandibular dentition that is the importance of this definite proportionality amongst the arches now what if this proportionality is not met or there is some kind of certain set of discrepancy between the arches according to the tooth size depending upon it so what would happen that may lead to overjet overbite midline issues attrition amongst the teeth altered cusp fossa relationship or cusp embrasure relationship or the occlusion would be disturbed hence it will lead to difficulty in maintaining the uh, in getting or maintaining the ideal occlusion with a good alignment or the ideal overjet and overbite also the class 1 molar relationship so in this particularly analysis in the boltons analysis we will try to figure out what kind of discrepancy may exist that how one arch may be crowded or spaced depending upon the anatomic bulk of the teeth before going into the detail let me describe about cusp fossa relationship and cusp embrasure occlusion relationship when one tooth is in contact or occludes with the single opposing teeth then that is the cusp fossa or cusp to cusp relationship or on the another hand when one tooth it occludes with two opposing teeth in that case that is the cusp embrasure relationship in which the cusp falls between the embrasure between the two teeth so let's try to find it out how it is important if we look at this diagram we can see here one tooth is in contact with the it occludes with the other two teeth and the cusp falls between the embrasure between the two teeth now now if you look at this picture in this case here also the one tooth is in occludes with the other two teeth here also you can see here the cusp embrasure relationship is altered either for this tooth or for this tooth could it be any tooth so we need to figure it out that how is it 
important in case in such cases when one teeth does not occlude adequately at the place it should be what kind of problems it may take along with it is supposedly one tooth is in end to end relationship it is not occluding like the adequately it should occlude so in that case the chances of atresion may be seen so atresion is there when the cusp does not fall into the adequate places other problems that may be seen is like in anteriorly midline discrepancies are seen we need to do extraction or it's a non extraction case that also depends upon the bolton's analysis uh, like in case of peg laterals in which the size of the lateral incisor is smaller as compared to the as compared it should be so that is the case of the peg laterals in case of peg laterals obviously there would be the maxillary anterior tooth deficiency in comparison to the mandibular arch or it can be said that there is the mandibular tooth material excess so mandibular to tooth would seem to be crowded as compared to the maxillary anterior teeth so that's how it is important for us to know that which counterpart is at fault so the basically the bolton's analysis it describes the relationship of one arch with respect to the other arch based upon the tooth size this analysis has been divided into two portions one is the anterior and another one is the overall ratio what is done is in anterior ratio is will describe one by one in anterior over in anterior ratio what is done is anterior teeth canine to canine from this side to another side the mesiodistal width of all the teeth is calculated using the vernier caliper or the divider the divider is used more adequately the vernier caliper is used to calculate the mesiodistal width of each tooth anterior all the anterior in the anterior segment canine to canine it is done for both the arches it's done for upper arch also and for the lower arch individually when the mesiodistal width is calculated calculating that an, an anterior ratio is calculated which is mandibular 6 divided by mesiodistal sum of mesiodistal width of maxillary 6 multiplied by 100 as we know there exists a definite proportion which has already been calculated by the researchers in the research work it has been said that for the anterior ratio there is some value which is 77.2 it is said that from now how the 77.2 value is important to us let's discuss now their inference is if the value is if the ratio comes out to be 77.2 it means that is the ideal case there is no discrepancy between the tooth material tooth size or anatomic bulk of upper or the lower teeth of one arch with respect to the another arch they both are in the ideal case but what if the ratio is greater than 77.2 if the ratio is greater it means there is mandibular anterior ex excess you need not to mug it up you need not to memorize it just learn the concept behind it the concept is if this ratio is greater if this ratio is more obviously the mesiodistal width of maxillary anteriors or uh, maxillary 6 uh, tooth will be less or maxillary excess or it can be said that there is or there will be this value is less or there will be mandibular excess so this is how it is calculated and if there is mandibular anterior excess now how much excess is there from the value we can calculate that yes excess is there we have to apply it into the formula to find it out how much excess is there so we have a formula for that according to which we can calculate it into the millimeters that this much millimeter discrepancy is there or this much mandibular tooth material excess is there supposedly it, it could be 1 mm 1.2 1.5 mm for example similarly on another hand if the ratio is less than 77.2 that indicates the maxillary tooth material excess anteriorly now how much 
excess is there for the maxillary teeth that can be calculated from the values the sum of mesodistal width of maxillary 6 minus mandibular 6 into 100 by 77.2 from that we can calculate how much discrepancy is there in millimeters now why these values are important once we know from the ratio anterior ratio that some kind of discrepancy is there now we know what kind of discrepancy is there and how much millimeter are involved into it accordingly that would help us into diagnosis and based upon that the our treatment plan would be there that there if uh, the discrepancy supposedly mandibular tooth material excess anteriorly is there in that case interproximal reduction can be done ipr could be the one solution to it in which the slight tooth reduction is done on the either side maintaining the symmetry of the tooth and the arch or if the discrepancy is greater in that case the lower incisor extraction could be done so extraction on extraction case this is also dependent upon the values now similarly as we have described about the anterior ratio there is another term which is called as the overall ratio what is done in overall ratio similarly here all the mesodistal width of all the teeth from 1 to 6 is calculated in each arch on all the four quadrants for both upper and the lower arch the sum of mesodistal width of all the upper and the lower arch teeth are taken individually all the six tooth in the upper arch and all the six teeth in the lower arch that value considering will help to find out the overall ratio we put it into the uh, ratio and we try to find out the what ratio does it brings out researchers they have given that ideally the values should be 91.3 if the value comes out to be 91.3 it is said that that is a ideal case it means between the upper and the lower arch overall there is no tooth size arch length discrepancy there is no tooth size discrepancy anatomic bulk of the tooth is adequate as it should be in a ideal case but but what if the ratio comes out to be greater than 91.3 it indicates the mandibular tooth material excess how much excess is there that can be calculated in millimeters and put it into the formula and that will tell us how much discrepancy is there how much mandibular tooth material excess is there as compared to the maxillary teeth or as compared to the value it should have to achieve an ideal occlusion or the alignment on another hand if this value is less than 91.3 it indicates the maxillary tooth material excess and putting it into the formula will give us the value in millimeters and from that we can derive how much discrepancy is there if maxillary tooth material is excess it means we can calculate it if the value is less than 91.3 now depending upon this discrepancy calculation one can help to figure out that what has to be done whether it needs an extraction or that this is a non-extraction case so this is how the Bolton's analysis is important for us to figure it out what has to be done so this discrepancy calculation is very important for us to reach to a certain diagnosis and based upon that diagnosis certain set of treatment plan is done and that plan is executed so this is all about bolton's analysis i hope it's clear if you like the video please like share and subscribe and stay tuned